Hello and welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and in this video we'll take an in-depth look at the Blend tool and the Blend Making options. This will be a good start for beginners, a refresher for more experienced users, and along the way you'll learn some hidden tips. So let's get started. First I'm going to create a blend between this yellow rectangle and the red one. I'll select them both, then go up to the Object menu to Blend Make. And now you can see a nice smooth transition between the two objects and the color gradates from yellow to red. And in fact, before the gradient tool was introduced in Illustrator, people used blends to get this kind of effect. You don't have to have a smooth color, however. I'm going to go back to the object menu to Blend, Blend Options. You can see as my spacing method, I do have smooth color chosen right now, but I can also choose specified steps. I'll enter 8 and then turn on the preview button and you can see that Illustrator creates 8 steps in between the original two objects. I can also choose specified distance and I'll enter a higher value, say 100 points, and now Illustrator creates the blend based on this space between the objects and uses as many objects as it needs to make that happen. You can make blends between more than two objects. I'll select all three of these rectangles, go back up to the Object menu to Blend Make, and you can see that transition there. I can also get to the Blend options by double-clicking on the Blend tool. So again, I've got Smooth Color chosen, and now I'll switch to Specified Steps, enter a lower value, turn on my Preview button, and now you can see that Illustrator has created four steps between the first and second object, and four steps between the second and third. All of the shapes don't have to be the same. I've got two rectangles and a circle here. I'll go back up to Blend Make, and you can see now that the yellow rectangle sort of morphs into the purple circle, and then the purple circle morphs into the red rectangle. So both the color and the shape are being blended in this instance. You can get a lot of interesting effects by using different kinds of shapes. And the thing about a blend is that it's a live effect. So I can move one of these objects, or scale it, or rotate it, or change its color, and the blend will update and change on the fly. No pun intended there. You can also blend live type. So here I have two text objects, and I'm going to select them both and create a blend, and you can see how one word starts to merge into the other. I'm going to double click the blend tool to bring up the options, and then as I increase my steps, you can see how that affects the blend. These are still live, editable text objects, so if I take my Type tool and change the bottom word, the blend updates. I can even change the color of the text for a different effect, and again, the type remains editable. Blends can be used to add dimension and highlight to objects. Here I have two ellipses, and I'm going to select both of them, and then I'll create the blend using the keyboard shortcut Command Option B. And again, I can recolor, size, move, rotate any of the objects, and the blend will update. You can also create a blend using the Blend tool itself, and here are some tips for that. The keyboard shortcut for the Blend tool is the letter W, and I'm just going to hover over this first object, and you see that my cursor gets a little asterisk on it. I'm going to click on this object, it doesn't have to be selected, and then I'm going to move over to the red rectangle and click on it. And there's my blend. I'm going to undo that blend, and this time I'm going to hover over one of the anchor points on the first object, and you see that the little square on the cursor gets filled with black. I'll click on that point, and then go over to the lower right point on the red rectangle and click on it. And you can see how the blend is different. And I encourage you to experiment with different shapes clicking on different points in each respective shape. I'll undo that blend and make another one. I'm going to click on the yellow rectangle, and then I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the second object, and that will bring up the blend options. So this is a handy tip because you can select the blend options and make the blend all in one step. And I'm going to choose Specified Steps and leave it at 8. Now you'll notice that every blend has a line between the objects, and this is called the spine. Right now my spine is horizontal because both of my objects were aligned, but if I want the blend to follow a different spine, I can replace the spine with any open path. So I'm going to select both the blend and this arc shape, and then I'm going to go up to the Object menu and choose Replace Spine. And now you can see what's going on there. 
You have a choice of the orientation of the objects along the spine. I can choose Align to Page, as it is now, or I can choose Align to Path, and now you see that those blend steps follow the curve of that path. You can create a blend from just about anything, gradients, symbols, text, even 3D objects. So here I have two squares that have a 3D effect applied to them. I'll select them both and make a blend, and now you can see that one cube appears to be tumbling down to the other one. And not only do the colors blend together, but the rotation changes as well. I'm going to edit the extrude and bevel effect of the yellow square. I'll turn on the preview button, and I'm just going to turn this around randomly, and you can see the blend update, and that's a fun and interesting effect. There are a few more options to be aware of when using blends. I'm going to create a blend between this yellow star and this red circle. I can go up to the Object menu, to the Blend menu, and choose Reverse Spine. And what that does, as you can see, is changes the direction of the spine, and in this case, it's switching the position of each object. I'm going to undo that and then undo the blend, and this time I'll select all three of these objects and make a blend from those. And you can see that the blend is going from the orange shape on the left, to the yellow star in the middle, to the red circle on the right. And this is because of the stacking order of these three objects. If I go to my Layers panel and reveal the blend, you can see the orange shape on the top, the yellow star in the middle, and the red circle is on the bottom in the stacking order. I'm going to release this blend, that is, unblend it, and then I'll just delete the spine. Now I'll change the position of these objects in the stacking order by moving the yellow star to the bottom in my Layers panel. I'll select all of them and create a new blend, and you can see now that that blend is in a different direction, and that has to do with the stacking order. So the orange is on top, the circle is in the middle, and the yellow star is on the bottom. I can choose to reverse this order by choosing Reverse Front to Back under the Blend menu. And again, you can see in the Layers panel that those objects have reversed position. The yellow star is now on the top, and the orange shape is on the bottom. Here's another example of reversing front to back. Here is a blend made of three 3D cubes. And you can see that each step is in front of the previous one as they go down. If I go up to the Blend menu and choose Reverse Front to Back, you can now see that each subsequent step is behind the previous one. Well, I hope this has given you a good overview of the Blend tool and its options. You can do so many cool things with blends, so experiment and, as always, have fun.